Hello everyone, it has come to my attention that maybe, just maybe, the input chart isn't quite enough to help you with this assignment. So I'm going to go over this assignment and we'll talk about it as we do it, okay? The phenotype is in fact the physical trait that is expressed. So in this first chunk, we're going to be looking at eye color, okay? Homozygous are two of the same letters. Heterozygous is a different letters, okay? So as you can see, big B, big B is homozygous, and little b, little b is also homozygous, okay? In this case, brown eye color is dominant, which means you only need one, capital B, to have these brown eyes. See how there's only one B here? And the little b, the blue eye color, is recessive. And that means you have to have two little b's in order to see that gene being expressed. Okay? So here is a Punnett square. The father has blue eyes and the mother has homozygous dominant brown eyes, okay? So this big B goes here, this big B goes here, this big B goes here, and this big B goes here. And same with these, these are gonna go down in those two squares. This little B goes here, this little B goes here, this little B goes here, and this little B goes here, and you end up with four children that are heterozygous, for eye color, but they're all going to have brown eyes, okay? So let's go ahead and do one. So here we have a heterozygous dad, so he has brown eyes, and married to a heterozygous uh, mom, and we are going to predict the outcome of their children, okay? This is just a prediction, and they're 25 and married, so that's, so don't worry about that, okay? This big B is going to come down, so we're going to move. We always put the capital letters first, okay? This big B is going to go over, so it's here and here, okay? This little B is going to go this way. Little B, little B. Okay, and this little B is going to go down. And here we go. Okay, our cross is completed. I'm going to move them up a little bit so I have some room because I did not think that out very well. But that's okay. I forgive myself. That's super easy just to move them up, right? So, in this, if these two people got married and had babies, they would have, um, so big B, big B, that would give us brown eyes. Big B, little B, that's going to give us brown eyes because, remember, this big B is dominant, over blue eyes, okay? So now we have a big B, big little B. That's still going to be brown eyes, even though they're heterozygous. And we have little B, little B. That is going to be a blue-eyed baby. Okay, so they have a one in four chance of having a child with blue eyes. Okay, so that's how you read these things. That's how it how it goes. Okay, so hopefully doing that one, you can you can try your best on these ones. Okay, so good old SpongeBob. This is where a lot of you got confused. Okay, so remember when they are the same letters, they are homozygous. So look, I got a whole bunch of hoes over here. <laughs> Just kidding. But, so these are two capital letters. They are the same. This is homozygous. 
These are a capital letter and a little letter. They're different. That is called heterozygous. Whoops, how did I get that one? Well, we'll just put it here because big D and big D are the same. All right, let's see if I can get the heterozygous one. Here we go. Okay, so you're just going to go through and tell me if these are heterozygous or homozygous. Okay? And then what they want here is which of these genotypes, remember genotypes are the letters, would be homozygous. So in this case, we have big T, big T. We have little f, little f, big D, big D. You get the picture, okay? It just wants to have in words which ones are homozygous. And in this case, we're going to be looking for differences. So we have this first little one that's big D, little d. We have big B, little b. Okay, and you're going to list those out. Which one is homozygous, which are heterozygous. Hetero means different, homo means the same. Okay, now we're going to talk about the phenotype. Remember the phenotype is the physical traits. Okay, yellow body color is dominant to blue. So that means that we just need one of these capital letters to have a yellow body, okay? So if we have two capital letters, we're definitely gonna be yellow, okay? Here we have a heterozygous, big Y, little y, but even though there's no two big Ys, this big Y is gonna take over, it's dominant. And so big Y, little y will be yellow. And little y, little y is going to be blue, okay? And I just got that from the words right here. Now, square shape is dominant to round. So big S, big S is going to be square because that's the dominant trait. And again, here we have a big S and a little s. You only need one capital to get that square shape. And then little s, little s is going to be round. Okay, so I got, again, I got this right here. It's telling me that square is dominant, okay? So for each phenotype, give the genotypes that are possible for Patrick, okay? So, here we have a tall head T is dominant to short T, okay? So if we look over here, big T, big T, that's going to give us a tall. And because tall is dominant, a big T, little t is also going to be a tall, okay? Now, the only way to get short is to have two little t's. And here we go. Okay. So I think you can do the rest on, on this slide. Okay. It's the same process. All right. Here's where it gets a little complicated. Okay. SpongeBob SquarePants recently met Sponge Susie Round Pants at a dance. SpongeBob is heterozygous for his square shape, but Sponge Susie is round. Create a pun and square to show the possibilities that would result if they were 25 and married and SpongeBob and Sponge Susie had children. Okay? So you can go back here if you want. It says hint, see question two. Okay, question two, here's square and round. Okay, they said SpongeBob is heterozygous. That means they're different. Okay, so right here, this is going to be his genes that he could donate. So here we're going to put a capital S, and here we're going to put a baby S because he is heterozygous 
for squareness. Now, in order for a sponge to be round, you're gonna need to have two little, two little S's because that's what makes round. Okay, so Susie, she can donate a little less or a little less. So now we're gonna do the pun and square, okay? So this big S is gonna come down, this big S coming down, and this little S is coming over here. This little S is gonna go this way. Whoops, remember we always do capitals first. And this little S is gonna go this way. And here we go. Okay, list the possible genotypes and phenotypes of their children. Okay, so genotypes is referring to the letters. So in this case, we have two that are heterozygous. And we have, and that's going to be square. And then we have two little s's. And those are going to be round. Okay, so what are the chances of a child with a square shape? Okay, so two out of four, these two are going to give us a square shape. Two divided by four is in fact 50%. Okay, what are the chances of a child with a round shape? Again, these two are going to be round. So there's two and there's one, two, three, four boxes total. Two divided by four is still 50%. And this is going to tell us if SpongeBob SquarePants and Sue's Sponge Susie Round Pants have married and get babies, they have a 50-50 chance of having square babies or round babies. Okay? So for this next, so the next few ones are pretty similar. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the, the genotypes here. Okay, Patrick, Matt, Patty at the dance. Both of them are heterozygous for their pink body color, which is dominant over yellow body color. Okay, it says C, question three. Here we go. So pink body, big capital P and little p. That's what we're looking for. So they're both heterozygous, which means they have one capital P and one little p. Okay, so these could be Patrick's genes that he could donate. We have one big P and one little p. Okay, you're going to do the Punnett square, list the genotypes, and do the math. Okay, let's see. Here we go. If Squidward's family has light blue skin, which is dominant trait for body color in his hometown of Squid Valley, his family brags that they are a purebred line. He married a nice girl who has light green skin, which is a recessive trait. Create a Punnett square to show the possibilities that would result if Squidward and his new bride had children. Use B to re capital B to represent the dominant gene and the little b to represent the recessive gene. So purebred, that's just another term for homozygous. So that would mean that Squidward is Big B Big B, but his girlfriend, her wife, remember, 25 and married, she's green. And that means that her genes have to be little g, little b, little b. Okay? So, again, list the genotypes and phenotypes. Do the percentages. Would Squidward's children be considered purebreds? Okay? Are any of Squidward's children going to be big b, big b? Hmm, interesting. Okay, assume that one of Squidward's son, who is heterozygous for the light blue body color. Okay, so that's going to tell us that he's capital B 
and little B married a girl that was also heterozygous. Little B, little B. Okay, now you're going to do the Punnett square, figure out the percentages. And can't leave out Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs and his wife recently had a little crab, but it has not been a happy occasion for them. Mrs. Krabs have been upset since she first saw her new baby who had short eyeballs. She claims that the hospital goofed and mixed up her baby with someone else's baby. Mr. Krabs is homozygous for his tall eyeballs, while his wife is heterozygous for her tall eyeballs. Some members of her family have short eyes, which is a recessive trait. Create a Punnett square using T for the dominant gene and little t for the recessive one. Okay, so Mr. Krabs, he's homozygous. That means the same. And he has tall, so that means he's big T, big T. But Mrs. Crab, she's heterozygous. That means she's a big T, little T. Okay, so you're going to need to find the genotype and phenotype of their babies and see if the hospital had made a mistake. Okay. Just going to give you a little hint to have short eyeballs. You have to have little t, little t. Okay. I hope this helps. Sorry, it's long. Email with any or do do your private chats or email if you have any questions. Have a good day. Be good people. Make good choices.